All right, so today we're making this material, which is a uh, cobblestone-like wool with a procedural moss on the top of it. You can see I'm using it here for some rocks as well. It's a relatively versatile material and it's not that difficult to make. So let's get into it. So here we have a somewhat well-organized overview of what we're gonna make. We are going to make a stone material, a moss material, and then blending them together. So let's in this new project just use a default cube and um, make it a little bit more like a wall. Mostly for just visual purposes because it's fun, right? All right, so now we can go into the shading tab. We already have an existing material here, so let's start by making this stone. Because of course that's going to be the base of our material. And that's actually relatively easy. We start off adding a Voronoi texture. And if we preview the colors out of that, you can see it has this cell structure that we're going to use to make stones out of. It's a little stretched out though, because it's uh, using the UV. So if we press Ctrl T while well, we have that selected and we go from generated to object, we have a non-stretched version of the texture. Then we can scale it up or down depending on how big we want the stones to be. And then we add a color ramp here and this is going into the base color of our principal BSDF shader. And then we simply pick the colors that we need for our bricks or stones or rocks or whatever you want to call them. Obviously we don't want them to go fully white. We probably also want the contrast to be much higher so that there's less different versions and shades. This probably can be a little darker though. Then if we preview the distance, this will give us the distance from the edge of every cell. So we can actually use that for a normal map or even a displacement map eventually if we want to, to give it a little bit more depth than what it has right now because it's rather flat. So we add a bump node and the distance here is going to go into the height of that node. And then the normal here is going to go into the normal. Now this doesn't look quite right and that's because it is using the darker parts and saying that they are further back. So now the normals are being calculated as if the stones are going inward. But luckily the bump node has a very nice invert option and now it actually looks like stones. Obviously there's no actual displacement yet but we'll get into that. You can fine tune the look of your rocks with the uh, distance and strength parameters here. And that's really all there is to this whole uh, making bricks. Again, we can use this same information uh, going into a displacement node instead. Put that into the height, then a displacement goes into the displacement. Then if we make sure we're using the cycles render engine, we're going to go feature sets experimental. That might sound scary, it's really not that bad. Obviously, if you're making this for a game asset or something like this, you would do this in engine and make a displacement map. But we go down into the material settings here and we in settings go displacement from bump only to displacement and bump and now if we go into a render mode things will still not look very displaced and that's because there's not enough geometry to displace that so what you'll do is you'll come over here add modifier and subdivision surface set it to simple and now we have adaptive subdivision. So this adds subdivision based on where it's needed. So obviously this is distorting the wrong way around as well. So for this, we're actually going to need an invert node in between these. And the scale is going to be significantly lowered. We only need a slight displacement here, but now you can see there's actual like displaced geometry. We can play with the roughness a little bit to make uh, the stones less shiny because the, the stones, they're not like glass. Now that we have all of that figured out, we can just group this together in a node group and uh, we can call this uh, stone just for organizational purposes. So we have a, a shader output here and a displacement output. We're going to disconnect both of those because now we're going to focus on making our moss material. 
we start off by adding a principal BSDF and we're going to make this in much the same way that we did for the actual stone here. So instead of a Voronoi texture, we're actually going to be using a noise texture in this case, but that's still going to go into a color ramp and we're with Ctrl T going to add texture coordinates. We're going to use object space and this is not quite a very mossy look so if we start distorting this a little bit depending on the kind of moss you're looking for you've got a very fuzzy moss but then there's also moss that looks a little bit more like long strands that's the kind of look i'm going for here so that's what you want uh, going on here then we obviously don't want it to be black and white we want the moss to be uh, a dark green to a lighter green not fully white though that, that would be a bit much and we can start playing with the contrast values to see uh, what kind of look we actually want this seems pretty good for right now again the moss itself probably uh, wants to have a pretty high roughness and a low specularity because it's a material that very very diffusing we then also use this noise texture uh, into a bump node in the height input, just like we did before for the normals. And the strength obviously is going to have to go way down, but there just has to be a little bit of detail going on there. And then you want to scale this to look right about something like this, maybe. You could also put this into the displacement. Uh, that is a possibility. I don't think that kind of micro displacement is really needed and it's going to add a lot of render time for the very, very small detail that you're adding here, but you definitely could. And that we would obviously do in the same way uh, with displacement. You hook that up into there and then we get the height from the factor of the noise texture here and we set the scale to being mega low and we have a little bit more displacement here as well it's really micro details as i said even if i zoom in you don't really see too much of it so maybe we can add a little bit more of it but not too much because it starts looking a little weird and that creates the moss texture so let's again with ctrl g group these and call it with f2 moss now we're going to blend these two together and for that we're going to start off with a gradient texture in this case which will give us a gradient from zero to one but not in the direction that we want it in at the moment so with ctrl t we get a textual coordinate mapping and we can actually change this around so we can say uh, the rotation around the y-axis is 90 degrees and now it's going up uh, from the bottom to the top. The only thing is the material that I've made, I wanted to be sure that it's always on top of the object in world. If I now start rotating this around, you can uh, see it's still using the object space. So it's the bottom of the object to the top of the object rather than the highest point in the world to the lowest point in the world which for most cases is fine but if you're going to use this material to like use on a lot of walls and rocks that go all over the place you wanted to have moss growing from the top to the bottom no matter the orientation luckily for that we have a vector transform node which will go from object space to world space and instead of using generated we're going to be using the object vector here and now when we turn this thing around you can see the white part are always on top no matter the orientation of this thing so even if i orientate it this way and then do a little bit of this it's always going to be calculating what's on top from a worldview perspective but i can still move this thing up and down and it remains the same uh, as long as it doesn't get rotated one little thing though is that before we had a gradient going from zero to one now we have a gradient going from minus one to positive one and that's not necessarily something we want so what we can do here is in the x location we can just lower this and just kind of like guesstimate and change that back around to something more usable now we can put this into a color ramp uh, that just goes from black to white and this way we can 
play around with the contrast a little bit and where the actual cutoff point is. So if you want a lot of uh, black in this, we can just go all the way up there and we get a black at 50%. So now if we add a mix shader and use this as the factor, we can put both of these uh, shaders into this and you will start to see after a moment of calculation, because there's a lot of math going on here. It's the wrong way around. Uh, that's easily fixed by just swapping those two uh, inputs. We have moss on our wall and now we can start playing around with where that cutoff point is. It's easier to just do that with the color ramp itself. And in the worst case scenario, you can mess around on an individual basis here with the uh, location mapping as well. And now we have moss just at the top, but the cutoff just it doesn't look quite right, does it? And that's because it's a straight line and straight lines in general don't look very good. But lucky us, if we just use a noise texture here and we add a mix RGB node, using the output of that as the factor here for the color ramp. And we mix this gradient texture with this noise texture. You will see the straight line is suddenly a lot less straight. So if we go all the way to factor zero, it's a very straight line. If we go to uh, factor one, it's a pure noise texture, which in this case mostly means black. So somewhere around this, uh, you will want to experiment a little bit. You can also hook up this vector into the texture coordinate for the object or the generator to make it fit the actual object a little bit better. And now we can just play around a little bit until we're happy with the look we have. Of course, the scale of your noise is also uh, applicable here. And now things are starting to already look much, much better. Now, the displacement from our moss is actually uh, going on everything in this picture altogether, and we don't want that. We want to also blend the displacement for the two different materials. So we'll actually just do the same here, and that is uh, doing a mix RGB, because in the end, this displacement map is just RGB data as well. So this one will go in the bottom and this one will go into the top. And then we'll use the factor of this output to mix between the two. And there's a little bleeding over here, which that's more or less just gonna happen. You can do a lot of fine tuning to really get rid of that if you really want to, but it's not that noticeable, especially if you also add like a, a normal map to the rocks themselves, which I don't think we've done in this case, but that's relatively easy just adding a uh, noise texture here and just adding a adding node, adding these two things together and then the texture coordinate needs to be hooked up and we can uh, start playing around a little bit with the normals for the rocks to give them a little bit more texture. And if we go back over into rendered mode, maybe make it a little, there's a lot of tweaking around that we can do, obviously. So something like this will make the actual rocks look the best they can. And then add the cherry on top because the moss itself seems relatively flat now. We can even add in a, a little displacement for the moss specifically. So if we take the color out of this into a displacement node as well, and we do some vector math to add those together with uh, the output from this, lower the scale significantly. We now have some displacement to have the moss uh, stick out altogether. The moss itself might be able to use a little bit more in terms of displacement. But again, there's, there's a lot of fine tuning to be done here. And just like that, we have a cobblestone wall with moss growing on top of it. We can select all of these nodes as well. Ctrl G to group them, F2 to call them blend, and we have our setup. So now if we, for instance, uh, go back into uh, layout here and we add, let's say, a, uh, a torus, given that same material, it will do the same thing. Of course, as you can see, this doesn't have any moss right now. So what you'll want to do is you'll make a new material out of this. Then going into the shading tab, you're just going to in the blend 
group uh, mess around a little bit until you can see some moss showing up. And just like that, we have a mossy stone donut. Once this material is made, you can uh, use this to very easily and quickly add moss uh, stone textures to whatever you need. And then, of course, you can bake them out for a uh, for a game engine or just have them in Blender and render them out for your animations or whatever you want.